George's son, Edward VIII, had a lot in common with his controversial grandfather rather than his upstanding father. He embarked on many affairs with married women, courtesans and whoever else happened to catch his eye. Edward's antics disappointed George and the other royals, but they were glad that his drama was out of the public eye. However, this would not remain the case forever, and eventually he got himself involved with a scandalous woman who murdered her husband and threatened to bring down the monarchy. Please continue to support my channel by subscribing. Edward VIII became entangled with Marguerite Alibert, and she was not the kind of person that George wanted his son sleeping around with. Margaret Alibert was a French high-class prostitute who became the first lover of Edward, the Prince of Wales and heir to the British throne. She would later be at the centre of the biggest scandal of the times, and she was very nearly damaged the reputation of the future king and the monarchy. A series of events began to stop the scandal from getting out of control, and that is the interesting story of Marguerite Alibert, the prostitute turned princess turned murderer. Edward VIII is famously known for giving up the throne in 1937 in order to be with the love of his life, Wallace Simpson, who he was not permitted to be with because she was a divorcee twice before. This scandal was prevalent throughout Europe, but 20 years before, another scandal was taking shape. The affair was kept under wraps by the prince, and he only declared his feelings for his mistress on a paper, but she kept them all. George used all of his power to ensure that his son's name never appeared in the press surrounding Marguerite Alibert. And although he almost succeeded with just the odd rumour swirling, the public never learned that the Prince of Wales had an affair with a working girl who then shot her new lover. George eventually tracked down every last letter that Edward had written to Alibet and had them destroyed. But the damage was done and George would never truly trust his son again. His elder son caused him a lot of stress, but he did have another son who he adored and respected. This man would go on to become the future king when his scandalous brother put his love with a divorced woman above his duty to the throne. He was also very fond of his granddaughter, Lilibet, known by the public as Queen Elizabeth II. She loved him in turn, affectionately calling him Grandpa England. He thought both of them would make excellent monarchs, if only they got the chance. Maybe George had a sixth sense for what would transpire, or maybe his disappointment in his son had created a self-fulfilling prophecy, but by 1935, George's faith in his son and heir had all but evaporated. He is reported to have said, After I am dead, the boy will ruin himself within 12 months. I pray to God my eldest son will never marry and have children and that nothing will come between Bertie and Lilibet and the throne. George had always been the epitome of health, especially as a young, strapping lad as a sailor. But the years as king took his toll on him, and he had been involved in a few accidents that caused him poor health. The once hale and hearty king grew frail and sickly, and a painful tragedy only made things worse, when he lost his favourite sister. During World War I, his horse buckled and threw him to the ground, causing serious injury from which he never fully recovered, alongside smoking many a cigarette throughout his entire life, and those took a toll on his health. George had been extremely close to his eldest and late brother, Albert Victor, but he had also another sibling of which he adored and she was his little sister, Victoria. In December of 1935, when George was at death's door, Victoria suffered a hemorrhage and suddenly passed away. Her loss sent the king into a spiralling depression from which he would never recover. By January 1936, only a month after the death of his sister, George was still clinging on to life, but only just. 
He was now staying at the country estate of Sandringham House, and he was getting more and more frail, which restricted him to just his bedroom. Finally, his doctors released a statement. The king's life is moving peacefully towards its close, and that it did. George passed quietly in his sleep on the 20th of January 1936, or so it seemed, but there was more to the story that was shocking. Lord Dawson of Penn was George's chief physician in his final days. He kept a diary from his time with the king, and it made for an interesting read. He kept them a closely guarded secret for the rest of his life. In 1986, his diaries were made public, and they revealed the king's last words, a mumbled, God damn you, to his nurse. This was not the only thing his diaries talked about. Lord Dawson, a highly regarded doctor, had lied about that fateful night, as it would actually appear that his own doctor euthanised him. The entire world thought that George had passed from natural causes, because that is what they were told, and no one would have questioned that something much more shocking had happened. However, Dawson was an avid believer in euthanasia, and so he took it upon himself to end the king's life, in a bid to give him a kinder, less slow and painful end. Dawson knew that George's end might take hours or even days, and he saw the toll that it was taking on the king's family. So he made the decision to kill the king. He injected him with morphine and cocaine. Fifteen minutes later, George's breath slowed, then stopped. Upon his passing, George's son Edward became King Edward VIII, but not only did George not see a leader or a king in his son, his son also didn't fancy it either. George thought he'd make a terrible king, but apparently so did Edward. Before the year was out, Edward abdicated his throne so that he could marry his divorcee partner, Wallace Simpson. He was then free to live a life of high fashion, German sympathies and extreme prejudice while his younger brother became King George VI. So King George got what he wanted in the end when his second son and then granddaughter would reign over Britain. Please continue to support my channel by subscribing. Please comment, like and subscribe if you wish for more stories and leave your suggestions below and I will endeavour to cover them.